we went to the pub at Puglia to talk to the mayor, who was also the publican, and he knew about the Min Min Lights. And while we were there, we met May, who was a very friendly, affectionate lady who gave us all a hug. The event that unfolded that she told me in that hotel, the Australian hotel, in part of this research project when the camera crews went in with the two boys, was that they came in through the side entrance, they approached her to talk about Min Min Lights, and because it wasn't her country and it wasn't her position or even her right to speak about events that are in someone else's country, she directed the camera crew to her partner, Richard. Richard Saunders is his name. And he asked them directly before they questioned him about where did they come from, are you ABC or SBS? And he felt, well, they deliberately avoided the thing that he said, they were his words. They avoided the question and asked about the Min Min Lights. So he proceeded to talk about that even though he was upset and he stated that he was upset that they didn't answer his questions. Uh, and as he was halfway through his sentence, they turned the cap someone mentioned, the bloke beside the camera said, that that's a, that's a good shot. And he immediately turned the camera off, off Richard while he was speaking. Again, he was offended and filmed May giving one of the boys a hug. And so he, went over to May and said, this is bullshit, we're out of here, and removed May from that situation. What happens is, the negative aspects of Aborigines are always portrayed in, in the thing, and, and by viewing the film of May, everyone would, would assume that she was a run-of-the-mill, stereotypic, alcoholic woman, when in fact she's a very, very caring grandmother, and she's highly embarrassed about the fact. Now, the, now, either way you could look at it, the prelude of going into that, that scene was that those guys were to pretend to ask about the Min Min Light because it's a prominent feature in that town and then automatically go over to ask about are there any single free women? And there was dialogue about girlfriends. Are there any single girls in the town? There's a mob here for you. I can line you up with three or four of them. It could be a couple. You're not fussy, are you? And May looked like being portrayed as that single, loose, easy woman. And in fact, the women cannot stay. Our women who have viewed that since that I've been out there have stated that it's, it's, a, it's horrifying. It's racism. And they're highly offended. They're pretty hard to describe it. But looking at it, it our people in Australia are being portrayed as lazy, alcoholics, have no inhibitions or all those sorts of things, when in fact it's not. We've been negatively portrayed in the media for so long that we, we, we would assume protocols and various other things would ensure that that wouldn't happen. But in this case there's been a clear breach of those things that everyone has struggled and fought for to have some dignity portrayed in the media about our people. And here they are, they went in unannounced without any identification of who they were and filmed someone who, was in, who has implications with tribally and obligations spiritually and all the rest of it. Everything that I know of has been breached. I've taught uh, protocols, customs and communications at university level. And what, just the brief filming that I've seen is an insult to us, an insult to May, and a breach of all the hard-fought efforts of our people. We're all having a ball, uh, and I hope that when it's finished, uh, you'll enjoy it as well. The way that this research was conducted, that they wouldn't think that anyone would go and verify the findings or whatever they used and, and what are they are claiming. And I reassure you now, and I've spoke to several people that there were no permission slips, no identification of these people, and they never mentioned that it was a research project. They just filmed like, like thugs in a remote town, trampling on people's sensibilities, and didn't think that anyone's good. But I tell you now, I have letters of authority, signed and all the rest of it from her, 
and people who know me know that I'm, I will ask all friends and allies and anyone who is interested in this to intervene and form some kind of justice by the people who brought it to the attention of the immoral behaviour, in my opinion, of QUT in this research project and give, lend any support you can. Our people out there, and they've informed me that they're, it's, it's a regular event for people, the film crews going through there, and they're, they're used to the protocols and they understand the protocols. This man here is May's son. He's an actor in the film called The Proposition. Again, I state, these people aren't drunken Aborigines that are living out in a remote town and their only life is, is, is being drunk. These people are really important people in their own country. They are very, very important people, even in their guests in other countries. So what's happened to May being portrayed in such a negative, stereotypical way is an affront to us all. That boy's mother has suffered for 18 months with anxiety over her being misportrayed on the media. And now that she found out that it's worldwide, she's really, really offended. We've run this past other women and they are horrified. Our indigenous people are horrified. And now we see a situation where the protocols developed by QUT, in my opinion, every single one of them has been breached because there was no, um, for, uh, uh, what do you call it, acknowledgement that this was a research project and that there had to be certain protocols done before any of our people can be used in such a derogatory manner when in fact the person itself is nowhere like what is being portrayed on the Courier Mail website. That's the footage I showed at my confirmation seminar. I'm really proud of the work. Mr Michael Noonan claims to have a consent form. I've been reassured and I've been told that this is not a fact. As May has stated corrigally and her partner and the other Aboriginal people that were in that hotel at the time, that she did not and has not signed anything. If he had one of these documents that he claims to have, why would he misspell May's name? Mace has signed her all these documents that I have from her as M-A-Y, not M-A-E. Someone at that level can't make a grammatical error like that. If he has a document, signed document, they will know how to... The other thing that I... I, I the last name, has he been able to produce her last name? A signed document usually has a person's full signature. How come the last name is missing? and I would challenge the spelling on that too. And May, in all the documents that he talks about, is M-A-E instead of M-A-Y. It smacks of conspiracy, cover-up, corruption, you name the language. No matter which way you look at it, it is a total offence to, to portray our people that way and then claim as an important research document um, that they have a signed form. Produce the document. That's all I ask. And I ask anyone else to challenge the person to produce the document.